I want to teach a little bit about irrational numbers today. <laughs> you know, like numbers, you just can't reason with these numbers. It's not really like this. This is not what an irrational number is. To best understand what an irrational number is, I think first it's best to talk a little bit about what a rational number is. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction or a repeating decimal or you know, a regular decimal or a repeating decimal. For example, 3 over 4 would be a rational number. And you could write 3 over 4 as a decimal of 0 0.75. 5 is a number. It can be written as a fraction 5 over 1, so therefore it's a rational number. 1 half is another fraction. And I use this example. This is 0 0.33 repeated. If it's a repeating decimal, it can be written as a fraction. This one is the fraction of 1 over 3. All right, as long as it's a repeating pattern. What irrational numbers are, are any number that cannot be written as a fraction or a repeating decimal. For example, the square, uh, the, the square root of 2, the square root of 15, the square root of 7, these are all numbers that are just kind of they're just repeating, but not in a set pattern. Pi is another one, 3.1415, you know, and it continues on, but it doesn't really have a pattern. Right? So it can't be written in a repeating decimal or in a fraction. Basically, if you can't write it in a fraction, it is an irrational number. So here are just some examples. Our job today, now that we know what an irrational number is, our job whoops, is to find out if 72 is a rational or an irrational number. To do that, the first step is for us to actually factor the square root of 72. So we'll take 72, and we will find factors of 72 that are perfect squares. If you remember from lessons on perfect squares. Perfect squares are numbers that can be divided evenly by the same number. Like, for example, 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. It has a rational square. So what we're going to do is look for some perfect squares of 72. 72 is divisible by 4. 72 divided by 4 is 18. But there are some other larger perfect squares that we can divide 72 by. 72 divided by, let's try a big one, like, oh, I don't know, 16. 72 divided by 16 gives us 4 and a half. So that's not going to work for us. Let's try 72 divided by 9. That works out for us. 72 divided by 9, and we'll go ahead and do that. So what that means, 72 divided by 9 is 8. So that means it's the square root of 9 times the square root of 8. Now, we see here that we have 8 left over. Now, 8 can be divided further because it is divisible by 4. And 4 is a perfect square. So if you see this, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 9 is 72. So what we have here is we're factoring down the 72. Because we have 2, it means that we could have divided 72 in the first place. 72 divided by 36. But that's all right that we didn't know that. We found it this way by factoring throughout. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2. We have our square root of 2 left. 3 times 2 is 6. Now the question is, is this rational or irrational? Well, it has the square root of 2 here at the end. So that means that we can't write it as a fraction. And so this is an irrational number. We can circle our answer. We found out that this the square root of 72 is irrational. All right, let's go on to our next one. Is the square root of 324 rational 
or irrational. We're going to look for some perfect squares that are factors of 324. Let's start with something big like um, 81. And we find that 81 is a factor of 324. 81 times 4. Now this tells me something. The square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 4 is 2. 9 times 2 is 18. So what that means is that 18 times 18 is actually 324. Okay? That's not one of the, the times tables that I've memorized. So factoring it out like this has been able to get me the solution there. And we've solved and found out that this is a rational number. The square root of 324 is 18. The last one we're going to look at today is the square root of 567. 567. And to find the square root of this number, we are going to search for factors that are perfect squares. So we're going to start out with something pretty big, 567. It's a pretty big number. So we'll start out with something like um, 49. That's a perfect square. Divide 567 by 49, and we find out that that is not a factor of 567. So let's try another one that's kind of a big one. Um, 49, we'll do 64. And again, 567 is not divisible by 64. So I guess we'll try moving down a little bit. Uh, divided by 36. Again, it's not a factor of 36. So 25, it's not going to be a factor of 25 because it does not end in something that's divisible by 25. So let's go down to 16. 567 is not divisible by 16. Well, 567 divided by 4? Nope. 567 divided by 9? Oh, there we go. 567 does divide nicely by 9. It is 63 times 9. And if you look here at 63, 63 is also evenly divisible by 9. So we can divide 63 by 9 and write that one out as well. So we'll have the square root of 9 times the square root of 7 times the square root of 9. And we'll factor those. The square root of 9 is 3, square root of 7, and the square root of 9 is 3 again. So 3 times 3 is 9, and the square root of 7. What we found out here, again, we had the square root of 9 and the square root of 9. So 567 is divisible by 81 as well. But I haven't memorized the factors of 567, so I was just hit and miss practicing dividing different things by. 567. Okay? It just happened that I didn't do the right ones, and that's okay. Because when we are trying to find if a number is rational or irrational, it's going to take a little bit of guesswork, and it's going to take a little bit of finding what works for us. And as soon as we find one factor, like we found 9 was a factor here, then it tends to help because it'll break down this number even further to the point where we can see some factors in these numbers. Because I know the factors of 63. I don't, however, know all of the factors of 567. All right? So here's what I've done, and I've factored it down. The final answer is 9 times the square root of 7. The square root of 7 cannot be written in a fraction, so therefore, it is an irrational number. It's not rational, but it is irrational, so we'll circle irrational. All right, and that is basically the way that you find out if a number is rational or irrational. You'll take that same that number, try and find some perfect square factors of that number, and factor it down as much as you can. I hope that this lesson has been helpful for you on finding if a number is rational or irrational. Have a wonderful day.